My name is Alexander Michalitsyn. I work for Canonical, mostly on the uh, container stuff in the XC project. Also, some of you may know me as the guy from Creo project because I was presenting a bunch of stuff a few, for a few years before on this microconference all the time. Well, unfortunately, only virtually, but this time it's first uh, in-person experience. That's amazing. Uh, so, today we want to present uh, some work that's going on for like a year, I guess. Uh, so this idea is not new actually, because originally, I guess, uh, Stefan Graber and Christian Browner were presented that a few years ago, and it was about like, getting rid of the existing limitation in the username spaces in Linux kernel. But uh, nobody actually tried to implement that. And one year ago, Stefan told me like, okay, let's try to do that. And we'll see how insane this patch will be, like in the size. But it turns out that it's not that insane, and we uh, we were presenting that uh, intermediate result of that work on FOSDEM 2024. Uh, to my today talk will not be like a report with all the results because I just wanna have some discussion with you and hopefully to get some feedback. Because uh, effectively we have one road blocker right now uh, with C group of S integration uh, with this stuff, and so the. I guess that's the main point of having that talk today. Uh, so quick recap. What we want, we, right now, if you're using username spaces, you have to specify the user IDs and GIDs mapping from inside that username space to the parent one. And that's a limitation because you have, we have 32-bit space, user ID and GID space, uh, and if you want to have a menu of containers on the host node, and you want all of these containers to have a, a non-intersecting user IDs and GIDs on the host, then you, then you are in trouble, right? Because you, you, you have to limit your user ID and GID space inside. And uh, that can be problematic in some cases because, uh, for example, as far as I know, systemd uses some kind of high, uh, higher user ID ranges like starting from one, one million or something like that. And we just want to have more flexibility in that. We just want uh, to make user name space absolutely isolated and without any requirement to have mappings to the host. Uh, at the same time, we, we don't want to forbid that. I mean, so user can create a combined configuration like some of user IDs will be mapped, some, of, some not, or maybe completely isolated without mappings at all. So we uh, got an extension for the internal, internal type. We have QID, JID type uh, to make it 64-bit. 32-bit part is the user space visible. Second part will be used as a user name space identificator effectively. So here is some slides about how we map user IDs so you can have some understanding from that. But so in general, it's really simple. Like you, you have user ID from the user space, you have user name space, current user name space, and if you're doing set UID, set UID is call, it just combines the username space identificator with the user ID inside that username space, and that's it. That's it. Uh, so inverse mapping from get UID, and uh, important thing is that if uh, you, for example, running a process as, uh, with the isolated user ID on the host, you will see the overflow UID by default. But what we did is that we changed that a bit to make it show the user ID of the owner of that username space instead. So it's kind of mapping many to one, but really not because internally in the kernel, this UID is represented in, as a different number. So it's not, it's not the same. Uh, so problems. Uh, the biggest problem right now is, and I hopefully the last one, is C group of S. Uh, so why C group of S is the problem? First of all, because uh, even if you use C group namespace with C group of S, C group of S always has one super block. Uh, and that's a problem because actually VFS, uh, when you, like, all of you know that C group, C group of S permission model based on uh, file permissions, right? And if you wanna change the uh, permissions, uh, if, you if you wanna change the ownership of the C group, you need to use John syscall, and when you're doing that, kernel will ensure that the user ID is possible to map inside the user space of the super block. And as we have only one super block per, per the whole node, it means that this is not gonna happen because uh, your user namespace is isolated. It's not possible to mount it in the, uh, to map it in the initial, to represent that in the initial user namespace. 
and so you get in one, right? That's it. Uh, so the possible solution here is to actually get rid of that limitation and start providing the option uh, to have a few super blocks. So if if we create a C group namespace and if we do a first mount of the C group of S inside that uh, C group namespace, we can just allocate a new super block with the user namespace attached with the user namespace of that container attached. And that's that should work. Uh, but so that's effectively the explanation why where these checks are happening actually. So before we before we, when we set the user ID to the inode, bef always before that we have a check in the VF in the generic VFS code that ensures that this user ID is mappable. Uh, you can ask me like how this works then for the processes because for processes we also have some kind of ownership concept, right? Like we have task struct, struct cred, and in struct cred we have user namespace and we have effective user ID and a bunch of other user IDs, right? But for task struct, it happens automatically because like when you're doing set UID as call, as I told already, it, it happens just inside it. So we, we don't going to the VFS, obviously, we're not, we're not asking the VFS helpers to verify that this UID is mappable, we just set this user ID and that will work properly inside the user space. And outside, as I, as I told, this UID will be our flow UID, but it will be replaced with the owner UID of the user space. So for task struct, we have no that problem. But for C groups, we have, naturally, because we need to use chown, and that's a problem. Uh, so, also, it's important to mention uh, that actually C group, struct C group is not uh, attached to any user namespace or struct cred, so it's just absolutely independent concept. And it, 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 it contains the, so we, we have, a, we, we, we store the ownership of the C group through the kernfs e author structure, which is embedded into the struct uh, kernfs node structure. So, yeah. Uh, one of the options I was considering, I was thinking about is to maybe introduce a concept of multi-level ownership for C groups. So like, you have the one owner on the, on the host, and when you go inside the user space, you can have another owner inside that user space, and when you go nesting once again, you, you can have another one, but that seems a bit too complex, and also uh, Stefan's point was that, okay, that should work, but at the same time, it can be problematic from the memory perspective, because we will consume a lot of memory. So, uh, yeah, that's a QR code that you can scan if you want to look at the patches uh, at the, the current state, but there is nothing about C groups because it's just not uh, finished, and so the, 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 actually the purpose of that talk to discuss all of these maybe a bit crazy ideas with you to see the feedback from your side. Um, that's it. Okay, so maybe just to, to kind of clarify the, the kind of the C group issue is what we need for the container to work, uh, we need to create an entry in the C group tree. Um, and so all of that happens as an unprivileged, unprivileged user because otherwise root is magic and root can do everything, but let's ignore root. Um, create an entry in the C group tree, and then we, the container starts with that as its C group, and it normally does, it mounts its C group FS uh, after, after unsharing a C group namespace, and normally it would be able to interact with that. Well, in the normal world, the container manager can do the churn to what will be root in the container. In this case, it's impossible because the actual key UID for that container is not something user space can have access to. Um, one of the thoughts we have at this point is, okay, well, we can try and make it slightly magic, where at the time we actually unshare the, user, the uh, C group namespace, um, the kernel will be able to tell, okay, I'm in this C group right now. The owner of this C group is, lines up with the owner of my isolated user namespace. This C group does not have any task other than myself inside it. It doesn't have any children. It's, okay, so that's my C group. And effectively, at that point, switch the, the, the KUID owner, KUID, KGID owner for that C group to root in that container. Then that will allow normal interactions with that C group from within the container, so long as we have an extra super block. If we don't have an extra super block when we mount C group FS inside the container, and you mount C group FS the normal way, um, the VFS checks will fail because they will look at is that KUID valid with regard to the um, user namespace tied to the super block and the answer will be no and it's going to be 
thrown out there. So that's why the super block part kind of came into the discussion, is that it's effectively needed to avoid upsetting VFS checks. Um, and when you do that, well, now the issue is that from the host point of view, uh, the C group ownership has changed to something that can't really be resolved. Um, that's fine, we do handle overflows, that's what was described earlier. But then it means that the, the, the user who created the container on the host will not be able to directly interact with that C group. That's nothing new. It's already happened currently with the sub UID, sub GID delegation thing, where because you go through effectively a security wrapper that changes the permissions for you, you don't get to directly interact with the tree. Uh, and the same is true here, where like, if you need to go and modify that C group, you're gonna have to attach to the user namespace, which you're allowed to do, at which point you can go and interact with it. The issue we still have is then, okay, what happens, like how do you clean this mess up? Uh, so the current idea is that kind of doing the reverse, when the ref count for the C group namespace hits zero, then thrown in back to the initial um, UID, GID that it had, so the owner of the user namespace, at which point the, own, the container manager running on the host can go and delete it because it's, again, the owner of it. So that's the rough idea to try and limit the amount of crazy changes needed all over the kernel, but that's what we came up, came up with this morning. So I don't know if there's any obvious issue with this. It feels like the combination of having a super block that then solves the VFS check thing and having the auto magic switch of the owner uh, as the secret namespace is unshared and as it expires would fix this. Um, but maybe there's something major we didn't think of. So any thoughts? Thanks. Uh, so yeah, I'm not sure I uh, grasped all the dependencies that uh, you depend on. Uh, but I wanted to point out that the C group uh, namespace has an owning user namespace. So that's how you can derive the yes, owner. Yes, it has, and but there is no reference from the struct C group to that, right? So you, even when you're creating this C group namespace, it just effectively holds the reference to a proper C group, but not the the way back, so you can you you can determine the root C group from from for C group namespace, but you can because it, it depends. It actually depends on the task that is looking at it. So or like yeah, there like the C group. There is one global C group, and uh, the C group namespace depends on the task that yeah. is querying. Uh, so yeah, I mean you have task struct C group namespace, and then you have a root C group from from, from that you can yeah. determine the root C group. But if you have just struct C group, you cannot determine from which C group namespace it it, it, it is because you can yeah you because it, it, yeah the, the, like the namespace is in the eye of beholder. I mean, if we we need to have right. some information about user namespace to which this C group is attached. And my point is that you cannot determine that, right? So if but you because it's, bec it's like shared object. But there's no unique answer to the question. Yeah, there is, there, yeah, there is no unique answer. Yeah, I mean, if you, if we, if we wanna base our permission checks on the capabilities, we need to have some user namespace reference, right? And to do that, yeah. we need to hold to have some kind of pointer. To, to use it in space. That's my point. So like yeah, because I didn't understand why it's like not possible to enter the username space of the container. Oh, yeah. Then you have the necessary permission. Yeah, I mean you, you you can, and that's that's why like during that period of time where technically you can't directly do it through the file system from the host, you can totally attach to the user namespace of the running container and then access access the C group from there. That's fine. Yeah, that's 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 the how to mess with the C group in the intermediate between like it's starting and it's dying effectively. In between, you're gonna have to attach to the user namespace. We can discuss it after because <laughs> I have a feeling that it, it, it I has, misunderstood your question. Yeah, or the, this has a tendency to give people headaches, honestly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> If I remember the original problem, then uh, ownership inside and ownership outside of the container is wonky, right? That uh, 
you sort of want it to be owned by a container root from inside the container, and then you ideally want to see the UID or GID of the the, the unprivileged task, whatever, who who created the container. And you you're saying you don't have a solution for that. I mean, you have some solution for that problem, but I remember that you said that ID maps wouldn't work for this case, right? What can you briefly talk about this? What the uh, I mean, I, ID maps work well for like classical file systems, but for C group FS, I guess it would be a bit hacky because uh, if we use uh, VFS ID maps for that case, then it means that we effectively allow all the users inside, inside that user space to see, to, to have one to one mapping. So effectively, user ID zero inside the container in relation to CgroupFS will be user ID zero outside, which is kind of a bit. We scary. could. We couldn't we, couldn't we make it so that. Uh, Oh, the container mount would be separate. Interesting. Um, yeah, we would need to figure out a way where we can essentially say, uh, show show the owner's user ID as owner on uh, when you look at it from the host. When you look at the C group from the host. Yeah, and th that's what actually. And, 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 and that's what we that's what we do. So if if the if you've got a sub C group owned by UID one two three four in the container. Uh, and you look at the C group from the, the host point of view, you're going to see it as being owned by UID 1000, 1000, who actually created, because the way that works is the, the actual UID is another flow. When that happens, we go and look at the other 32-bit part to figure out what the namespace is. And then for that namespace, we go and look up at the owner cred, and we return that as the owner UID and GID. That's, that's what's shown to the user. That doesn't actually give privilege to that specific UID and GID on the entry, but that's what is showed. Same thing as process ownership is, is handled, handled the same way. So that's the super block I uh, said before. That's the separate super block thingy that I mentioned uh, in the call that we had. Yeah, well, we, need the we need the special, we need an extra super block in the container so that when UID 123 tries to write to its C group, um, it doesn't blow up because the actual KUID being checked is checked against the um, user in the space of the super block. Tied to the C group tree, at which point the VFS check would fail because that the actual <coughs> KUID being presented would not is not representable to the within that within that um, user in space. So I guess the only thing that I'm still having a hard time uh, uh, conceptualizing is. You are a task, you, you have the, even on the host, you would have a unified C group tree, right? So like there's one super block and you have yep. all these sub C groups and now I do an LS something on, uh, on my C group uh, uh, inside of that container. How, and that ties into what uh, uh, Michelle mentioned, uh, how do you figure out uh, that, that this is a C group that I need to show different ownership? Uh, like how does it work? Like how do you recognize, okay, this, this um, task uh, uh, owns the C group, like is re relevant for this container or owns this, uh, owns this container, therefore I need to magically switch the ownership of the C group. Because we can check the KUID. So the, if you look at the KUID 64, it's gonna be, it's gonna have a value for that other 32-bit chunk of it. If it doesn't, then it, if it's zero, then you know it's a normal, UID, GID on the host, if it has a namespace half set, then you know that this is, a, a, it comes from an actually to use a namespace, and you know that this 32-bit so half is the identifier for it. But you need information that, you need information that is attached to the C group, right? Um, it's, not. It's, it's just when you're, when you're looking at the, at the owner yeah. for the, for the entry, that would be, okay, well, this UID, this, K, this KUID has a value for that other, and if it does, then you know that this is coming from my favorite user interface. So you know to go and, and look at. Oh, so you're saying that C group? You're right. saying that C group has been created. Uh, that C group has been created from with. If the C group is created, this the super block is mounted or whatever from inside of the container, then uh, you record uh, the KUID 
uh, you have caught the information that this was created from that yeah, container. Okay. Well, like, when you unshare the when you unshare the, the secret namespace, we do the check, and if the check succeeds, then we change the owner to root in the USB secret namespace. At which point we know that that, that this is that belongs to the to the container. And we can do that. Yeah, it's very magical. Yeah, that's the one magic like the the basically changing the owner thing is the magical piece. So we don't need. I mean, we have we have this this. The, I dislike fundamentally dislike this concept because, uh, but we do it anyway. We do it in in proc as well. We have like proxies, max user namespaces, or whatever. All all these things are completely like, the ownership is completely relative. Whoever is looking at that specific directory at what point in time. I find this to be pretty disgusting. But uh, I I mean, I mean yeah, yeah that, that's a bit of a. <coughs> I mean, that's a bit of a general issue we've got with this entire thing, but since the, the, the user namespace is isolated by design, we can't, like none of its UIDs or GIDs make sense to any other user namespace, so we keep having to, to play with those hacks. Anyway, we're way out of time, uh, well, a couple of minutes, so should switch over to, to Alexa. Thanks, Alex.